good to go. Great. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us on this beautiful Saturday. My name is Bianca from Yarnspirations.com, and I'm joined today by one of our in-house designers, Seema, and she's going to be teaching us how to work up this uh, wonderful knit quilted blanket with Bernat Blanket Stripes. So just a heads up for everyone that this class uh, is being recorded. So if you find yourself um, wanting to revisit any section of the class, or if you think we're moving a little bit too quickly for you, you can always rewatch uh, the recorded version after it's been posted on michaels.com, which will come in the next couple days. So without any further ado, uh, I'll pass it over to Seema. Perfect. Hi everyone, my name is Seema, as Bianca mentioned, and thanks again for joining us. So for today's class, it's a pretty packed one. We're talking about three different stitches from three different blankets. We've got um, the waffle stitch knit throw, which is sort of, if you've knit your first, you know, two projects, you're probably gonna be completely fine to tackle. Um, the next one is the daydream knit blanket, which, um, has like a cool slip stitch design. And then if you really want to level up, we will talk about the knit quilted blanket that Bianca mentioned. Um, it's definitely one of those things where the projects go up in terms of skill level um, for each one that we talk about. So you might not be able to have enough time in the next hour to swatch all three blankets, but you'll at least from this class be able to see what the stitches look like. And you can come back um, as Bianca mentioned on YouTube and see um, you know, slow down if something is a little fast for you. So uh, if we can switch to hands, I'll start showing the uh, patterns. Perfect. So I've printed out my patterns here. The PDFs um, were probably emailed out to you. If not, they're usually popped into the chat, so you can check that out. Um, as mentioned, we're going to start with the simplest blanket first, um, which is this waffle stitch knit throw. So for today's class, all three blankets are using Bernat Blanket yarn. Um, it's a chenille, super chunky uh, yarn, which means that it works up really fast and so chunky that I can't really fit the whole ball under the camera, which is <laughs> kind of hilarious. Um, for this project, you'll need US 11 eight millimeter knitting needles. Um, I've got a few different ones here. For the swatch, you don't need them to be uh, 40 inches long, but if you are making a full-size blanket, um, it will need to be 40 inches long or, or some amount that's long because you want all your stitches to fit on your cord. Um, so the purpose with today's class, we're obviously not going to be casting on as many stitches as is listed in the pattern because we would never finish today. So where possible, I've included multiples. Um, so sometimes patterns include these, sometimes they don't, but essentially that tells you how many stitches you need to cast on to follow these instructions. Um, and again, if any of this is sounding really uh, intermediate, definitely check out, we have done a Knitting 101 and Knitting 102 class that's up on the michaels.com slash classes section. So if you need a refresher on casting on, slip knots, that sort of thing, um, definitely check that out. So I'm going to start with casting on a multiple of four plus two for this pattern. So in this case, I think I'm going to do um, 14 stitches. The reason being is 12 would be a multiple of four, four, eight, 12. And we want two extra stitches, so we'll cast on 14. So if you are following along, uh, go ahead and cast on 14. I'm gonna get my yarn ready. Um, and I've got a swatch here that's already done. If you want to see, it's kind of trickier to see on a smaller piece, but you can see that it's got almost like a grid like texture here. So this is the right side of the swatch for this particular knit throw. And the back of it has this cool like ribbed effect. Um, what's neat about it is that it lays flat. So it's a pretty forgiving blanket pattern. Um, you can kind of make it whatever size you want and it'll work out. So to start, I'm going to cast on 14 stitches. I'm just going to nudge this out of the way so you can see a bit more clearly. So I've got my slip knot here and 
I'm going to do a knitted cast on. You can use whatever cast on you like, the backwards loop, whatever you're comfortable with. And let's see here. So two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Now, this particular stitch, if you have knit a lot, um, is going to be really easy, and even if you haven't, it's really not that hard because it includes our two knit and purl stitches and as long as you follow the instructions as they're written there's nothing too fancy about it. I'm just going to make sure that I've got 14 here. So I've got 14 stitches. Obviously in the pattern it says to cast on 98 but we're doing the small size and we're going to start our right side row is a knit two purl two repeat. So we're going to do knit two stitches, purl two stitches, until we get to the last two stitches, and then we're going to knit two. So, um, and just because I know that there's a lot of varying skill levels here, if you do need a refresher on the knitting, knit and purl differences, um, definitely check out those 101 classes, but knit is when you're inserting from front to back, wrapping your yarn around the needle, pull through. So that's one, two, and if you need a quick refresher on what a purl is, your yarn is in the front of your work. And inserting your needle from back to front, wrapping your yarn around the needle, pulling through one. So that's one purl stitch. So we've, there's another purl stitch. So we've done knit two, purl two. And the thing about the chenille yarn is like sometimes, especially when you've done your first couple stitches, you're not gonna see as clearly as you might with some other yarns. But the reward is that you're going to work up the pattern pretty quickly and it's going to be very plush. So I'm going to continue with knit two, purl two as I go across until the last two stitches. So knit two, purl two, so Seema, mm -hmm. I notice here that you are using a pair of circular needles is that a requirement for this pattern or are people able to use straights as well? Good question. Uh, for the swatch, you can use a straight set of needles. Um, I have some, but they're really long, so they won't fit on screen. Um, I do recommend, I like circulars because it's just more forgiving for me to like keep the weight of my project in my lap. If you are making a full-size blanket, you're gonna need circular knitting needles because even with long straight needles, you can't fit, you know, 40 inches or 50 inches of stitches on such a small, small piece. So, but for today's purpose, if you've got straight needles, that'll totally be fine. So, I've come to the last two stitches in the first row, and I'm going to knit those two. And we're going to turn and go to the second row. And the second row is a purl two, knit two, super simple repeat. And until we get to the last two stitches where we're going to purl two at the end. So start with purl two, one, two, knit two, one, two, and then repeat that until we get to the last two. We've also got a, a great question here from uh, Linda. Do you mm -hmm. mind if I just step in? Yeah. So uh, we're wondering, um, so with some patterns, the project you know, can kind of gather at the bottom because of your cast on method. Is there a cast on here that you're recommending um, people use to make sure that you know, the, the project is laying flat at the end? Um, so typically with Yarn Inspirations patterns, they use the knitted cast on. Um, so 
if you hop onto YouTube and look up knitted cast on, you'll see some tutorials, but that's essentially the one where you have a slip knot and then you knit into that slip knot repeatedly and drag the loop onto your needle. I actually have a bit of issue with the knitted cast on because I do tend to find that it does pull in. Um, sometimes what I do is I go up one needle size just for the cast on if I know that I pull really tightly and that'll just help um, balance it out. Alternatively, you could use a long tail cast on, um, but the problem with that is that depending on how picky you are, it honestly doesn't bother me, but I know some knitters don't like the ridge that it creates on the first uh, first row. But mm -hmm. I would recommend the knitted cast on and going up a, a needle size. So we're just at the end of our second row here and the last two stitches are just a purl two. And the third row is just purl straight across. So again, I know this particular, if you are intermediate level, this is not too complicated. And even if you're a beginner, Definitely rewatch this and I think you can get the look of this. The particular pattern um, uses a twisted version of Bernat blanket. Um, I did see two colorways on the Michaels site where basically it's got more than one color um, in the yarn. So it gives it a cool, pretty cool effect. Um, you can see here, but I've also seen it done in like Bernat blanket brights, like in solid colors and it's still very effective. Um, Pretty good if you, once you get comfortable with the pattern for TV watching. So that's the end of the third row, which was just purling all the way across. And for the fourth row, it's just purl two, knit two ending with a purl to yeah. So purling the first two, knitting the next two, and repeating that until the end of the row to the last two stitches. My yarn stuck. And now once you've started working um, a couple rows, it becomes a bit easier to see where your stitches are. So you know that those knit columns are forming that kind of V section and the pearls are forming these bumps here. The last two stitches of the fourth row are purled. And then you get to the fifth row. Fifth row, super simple again. We're knitting two stitches, purling two stitches until we get to the end, and then we're going to knit the last two stitches. So knit two, purl two, and repeat that to the last two. Now this particular stitch, since it's so simple, as you know, it's a multiple of four plus two. If you wanted to make a pillow, for example, um, you could cast on whatever number of stitches you'd like, but just make sure it's a multiple of four plus two and you'll be able to adjust it. Even if you wanted to make a scarf pattern, whatever works. And you'll still be able to read these instructions aside from the 98 stitches and it'll all make sense. Of course, you'll end up with a different set of measurements, but we're at the end of the fifth row and we have two stitches left, so we'll knit those two. And for the sixth row, my favorite row in this one, you just knit straight across. And the reason that I wanted to show this particular stitch or stitch pattern is that it doesn't require anything complicated other than keeping track of your rows. So you can use a row counter. I've got one here where you just like press 
or you can, there are those rotating ones, or you can just tick off on the pattern. But as long as you know a knit and purl stitch, you can create this cool texture that's a bit more, it's a bit different than your usual stocking stitch or garter stitch. And it gives it a really you know, professional look. So the end of the sixth row where we've just knit. And if I turn my work, we can see here what those knit and purl rows have essentially done is added these bumps here, which creates that waffly look. Um, pull out the larger swatch here. So you can see here. Um, any questions about this particular stitch, Bianca, before I move on to the next stitch pattern? So we are just um, having some questions around just the multiple of four. So, um, would it just be easier maybe, or could someone, I guess, use the, uh, a stitch marker at the end there for uh, the last two stitches to kind of just... Remember that the, the two there? Um, you could, the only thing is that um, it's the last two stitches on every row are worked, or on the first, second, fourth and fifth row you would just have to ignore the stitch marker at the at the beginning of your row and only pay attention to it when it's at the end. Um, and again, it's a multiple of four plus two. So it could be eight plus two, so it could be 10. It could be 12 plus two, so it could be 14. That sort of repeat. Or 16 plus two, so you could cast on 18 stitches and the pattern would work. We've done, I've done 14 here, um, but you can see it basically just adding four every time now. So you could cast on 22 or 26, but it's a multiple of four plus two, so. Um, all right, so I'm going to actually switch on to the next stitch, which is a little bit more complicated. And it is the Daydream Knit Blanket. So there are two versions. The one that you probably have looks like this. It's using one of our twisted versions of Bernat Blanket. Um, this one is definitely more complicated, so I'm going to slow down with this one. Um, it's super cool. It has a garter stitch border all the way around. And then the middle here has these slipped stitches where you slip a stitch over three, and that creates this um, open work effect. Here's a very small swatch with it here. And I'm going to actually just pull this off my needle so that I can cast on for everyone. Um, for this particular pattern, if you want to follow it exactly as it's written here, um, the instructions as they are here, I would cast on a multiple of four plus 22 stitches. Um, that being said, I just want to show everyone the technique. So for today, um, I recommend casting on 18 stitches and that'll let us follow the instructions sort of. I've written them out, but I'm going to talk everyone through them. Um, it's a four row repeat, so it's a bit shorter than the other pattern. But I'm just going to get my yarn ready. And I would go ahead and make a slip knot and cast on 18 stitches if you want to follow along with this particular swatch. So I've made a slip knot here. And I'm going to use the knitted cast on today. Um, I think for the first, do, do, do. Uh, we should be able to show it without it. So I'm gonna do my knitted cast on for 18 stitches. This is what I mean, I've put the knitted cast on. If you make your slip knot too tight, it can be a little finicky to get your needle into there. But the knitted cast on, for anyone who hasn't seen it before, you're essentially inserting your needle into that slip knot as if to knit. You wrap your yarn around the needle 
and you pull it through and you take that loop that's on your needle and you twist it onto your left hand needle. So again, you're going to knit. Well, it looks like you're knitting. And you're taking that loop that's formed and sliding it onto your left hand needle. Um, obviously, you can see if you pulled really tight, that would cause this to really bunch up. So I'm just going to try to do this as loose as I can today. Casting on 18 stitches. But obviously, if you're more comfortable with another type of cast on, just go ahead and use that instead. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. See if I've got that right. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, eighteen. Now the reason that I've only cast on eighteen is this particular pattern has a really wide garter stitch border for a swatch. Um, and for the sake of time, I would I wouldn't recommend doing that. But if you are, if you really want to make this exact blanket and you're doing, you want to follow the instructions, but you need to customize the size. You're going to want to cast on, as I said, a multiple of four plus 22, and that includes the garter stitch border. So that could be 16 plus 22 that you would cast on, or 28 plus 22, whatever you need to get the width that you're after. But for today's swatch that I've written, I've cast on 18. Um, I think we can't, I'm going to go ahead and knit uh, three rows quickly. Uh, you don't have to do this, but the garter stitch will just help um, with keeping the work to lay flat and will let us see the stitch design. So while I knit those three rows, Bianca, I guess I could take any other questions that people may have. Sorry, I was just muted. Um... I think we're all good so far. I just did want to call out that we posted some um, patterns in the chat here. Uh, the pattern that you see in front of SEMA um, is, is the same as the one I, I posted. Uh, you just might notice the, the photo on the pattern itself is a bit different than, than the PDF we just shared. Right, we probably have this one. I happen to have this one already printed out, but it's the exact same set of instructions. We've just got it. Um, I have it here in a solid, but we also did it up in Bernat Blanket in one of the twisted versions. And that's one of the cool things. If you've got Bernat Blanket stripes or Bernat Blanket ombre or something, it'll all work for all of these patterns. And I apologize, there's some sort of squeaking mm -hmm. happening nearby. So if you can hear that, my needle needles are not working that fast. It's something in the neighborhood. <laughs> so I'm just knitting, as I mentioned, the garter stitch, doing three rows for the purposes of showing the swatch. And this was a tinier version that I did earlier of this particular stitch, which I find very satisfying. So is this pattern, um, this is a, for kind of like a full, a full size blanket or would this be something that you just kind of hang on the back of your, your chair in your living room? Uh, this particular pattern is pretty big, uh, 50 inches by 58. So I'd say it, I mean, it won't like cover a complete queen size bed, but it'll be pretty generous. Like you, you know, two people could be cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, 
you know, if you get impatient or you're gifting it to someone and you need to finish it sooner, no one will care or mind if you can stop a few rows early. Right, no one's gonna be measuring your... No, <laughs> that's the thing. So when we include the measurements here, it's obviously if you follow the instructions exactly as they are, and we try to make them so that you want to, but I totally get the one of the great things about knitting is that you can customize to make things that you can't find in store and make it exactly the way you like. So if the perfect length for you is 55 inches, go ahead and stop. So I have knit three rows of garter stitch um, in the blanket pattern. They've obviously got a huge section there. Um, so I don't want to do that many rows or we'll be here for a long time. The first row of this particular pattern is knit straight across on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I have tangled my yarn off screen. <laughs> okay. So this first row of the pattern is just knit. So pretty much like garter stitch rows we were just doing, but we wanted to make sure that was done on the right side. For the swatch pattern that we're doing here, we have um, the garter stitch border. I've put two stitches on the right and on the left. So the pattern shown has 10 stitches, which is really wide but you'll see based on the next row that it's two on either end. So for the second row of the swatch, we're going to knit two, purl to the last two stitches, and then knit two again. So we'll knit two. This is the wrong side row. And then we're going to purl to the last two stitches. So we're almost through to the end of this row. Curling to the end there, the last two. Good timing for my neighbor to be mowing the lawn. Apologies if you can hear that. <laughs> so we're at the last two here. We're going to knit those two. Now the third row is where things get a bit more exciting. So we're going to knit the first three stitches here. So one, two, three. Then we're going to slip the next stitch knit wise. So a pattern usually will indicate if you're going to slip a stitch purl wise or knit wise. If you're slipping a stitch knit wise, you're essentially inserting your needle into the, sti the next stitch on your left hand needle here. And you're inserting from front to back and sliding it off the needle. So we're just going to show that again. If you've never done a slip stitch before, it's easier than a knit stitch because you're not really knitting it. You're just moving it from your left hand needle to your right hand needle by inserting your needle from front to back as if to knit and sliding it off. So we're going to demonstrate that a few more times so you'll see that. So we did a slip stitch there. Now we're going to knit the next three stitches. One, two, three, and then we're going to take, the pattern says to PSSO, which means we're gonna pass that slip stitch over, and it says over the next three stitches. So we're gonna take our left hand needle, this is that slip stitch here, and we're gonna insert it, uh, I guess from left to right, and hold on to this tail end here. It's a bit, when you've if you've never done it before, it can feel a bit strange, but just hold on to your yarn here so it doesn't get lost. Inserting it from left to right, and you're pulling it over 
those three stitches and off. So you can see that slip stitch has basically gone around those three stitches. And we're gonna demo that again. So we're gonna slip this next stitch from removing it from our left hand needle to our right hand needle from back to front, sliding it off like that. And then we're going to knit the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Then we're going to take this stitch here, that was the slip stitch, and we're going to lift it over these three stitches. So we're taking our left hand needle, inserting from left to right, and then pulling that slip stitch over those three stitches on our needle, like that. That's what creates that wrapped or that loop effect that's at the front of our work here. So we're repeating that uh, until we get to the last three stitches. So we'll do another slip where we're uh, knit wise from front to back, slipping it off, knitting three. I hope that I showed that last one slipping off knit wise, but in case anyone missed it, they should, it should be slipped knit wise. So inserting as if to knit and then sliding it off. Knitting the next three stitches, one, two, and three. Taking this stitch here that was slipped and lifting it over those three stitches, which kind of cinches it together and that's what creates that hole or that lacy effect. And now that we're at the last three stitches, we're going to knit that. One, two, three. For the fourth row, we are going to knit the first two stitches. So knit one, knit the second stitch. Then we're going to purl one. So we're bringing our yarn to the front to purl that one stitch. And then we're going to purl the next three. One, two, three. And then we're doing a yarn over. So the reason we're doing that yarn over is in the previous row, when we slipped that stitch over three stitches, we lost a stitch. So we wanna keep our stitch count even. So we're gonna increase by adding a yarn over. So a yarn over, if you're not familiar, you're essentially putting your yarn over your needle and we're going to be purling the next stitch because the repeat is purl three yarn over. So bringing the yarn back to the front of our work and that's created an extra loop here that will be a stitch in the future. So I'll demo that a few more times, but we're purling the next three stitches, one, two, three. Then we're doing a yarn over again. So we're putting the yarn over our needle, bringing it to the front so we can purl again. And we're going to purl the next three here. One, two, and three. And now that we're at our, we're at our last three stitches, we're going to purl one more stitch. Seema, there's a, a few of us a little bit suspicious in the chat that your first uh, slip stitch was done purl wise instead of knit wise. I have a feeling too. I, <laughs> I think it still worked, but it was a little tight. And I realized that once I got further down. So good eye. We'll see. <laughs> if we look at it, I think because Chenille is so forgiving, we're not really seeing it. And believe me, if you're giving it to someone, they're not going to know the difference but it will go a lot more smoothly if you slip it knit-wise, as the pattern abbreviations tell us. <laughs> so we've only worked, we've worked the first four rows here, and you can see what's happened. I'm looking at it on the right side. The yarn over has created a stitch where that hole was so that we create that lacy effect that's there. 
which is super cool. I'm going to work the first row again, which is just knit across so we can see that a bit more clearly how that stitch turned out. Knitting right across. And as always, I'm always curious, like how else people imagine using these stitches. Um, I definitely think for a scarf, this would be cool. If, um, I should mention if you've never knit into a yarn over before, it'll look weird, but you're just going to pretend it's a normal stitch. You're inserting your needle, wrapping your yarn around, pulling through and sliding off. So you're knitting it as if it's a normal stitch and it'll all start to look normal after a few rows are completed. Now, is this a pattern reversible? Um, I, not as nice on the wrong side as the other stitch. So here is the a smaller swatch of what we're currently working and the wrong side looks like this. So, I mean, it's still a, a material, but it doesn't have the cool effect mm -hmm. that the, it looks a bit more like garter stitch with holes, but the holes on a larger blanket will look a bit more intentional than my tiny swatch here. So at least on the right side, it's got that cool slipped effect. Mm -hmm. So those are the first, um, I've worked the first to, four, to fourth row, and then I worked another uh, knit row and I think I have just enough time to work this second and hmm, not too sure because the quilted stitch is a little bit more complicated. Um, but I'm going to work on this for another couple minutes just so we can see what a second repeat looks like. So I'm on the second row. I'm knitting two. Purling to the last two stitches. I'm just going to do this a little quickly so I can show everyone. I really want to show everyone slipping the stitch knit wise because that's very important. So, finishing up the second row here. And I should mention all of these designs. Um, I didn't actually write any of these patterns, um, but they're all written by various members of the Yarnspirations design team. So shout out to the rest of the team for all the fabulous blanket patterns. So I've worked the second row there. So I knit the first two, I purled across to the last two stitches and I knit those two. The reason I rushed is because I really just want to show everyone the third row again um, with the slipped work correctly. So we're going to knit first three stitches, one, two, three. Then we're going to slip one knit wise. So we're inserting the needle as if to knit and then just slipping it right off. We'll knit the next three stitches. One, two, three. And then we're going to take that slip stitch and pass it over those three stitches there. And that creates that line or raised stitch there. Uh, then we're going to slip again knit Y. So we're just inserting as if to knit and then sliding off, knitting the next three stitches. One, two, three, and then sliding or passing this slip stitch over those three there. And again, we're going to slip knit wise. I was about to do it purl wise again, which shows habit. Uh, so we've slipped it there. So again, I did it front to back. Then I'm going to knit the, where am I at? Did I do something wrong? Knit three, we slipped one. We knit three and passed the slip stitch over. Slip one. Something's looking funny. So I'm just going to go back a couple stitches just in case. Did something wrong here. Hmm. 
button I slipped, I knit the three, I passed slip stitch over. I feel like I have one stitch off. So if anyone sees a drop stitch somewhere, because when you're looking on camera, <laughs> that happens. Let's see, knit three, we've slipped one, knit three, and pass the slip stitch over. Slipped one, knit three, pass the slip stitch over. I do think I dropped something somewhere, but I'm gonna carry on and, oh, all is, all should be fine. I think this here, hmm. I'm wondering, um, maybe you didn't yarn over on the last row? Maybe. <laughs> We're all trying to figure it out together. <laughs> <laughs> Something here, it was fine in the first time I did it. Um, I'm just going to slip it, then knit. One, two, three. I'm going to pass the slip stitch over. And I'm going to knit the last two stitches here. And then I'm just going to take a look at it for a second, see what's going on. Something went off here. Three, six, nine. Oh, well, my stitch count's obviously going to be off because I have to work the yarn overs. This is what happens when you're on camera, folks. You like lose your stitch count. I will say that if you are looking at this again um, and you're following the pattern, which is what I recommend doing, definitely cast on the multiple of four plus 22 and then you won't go wrong. <laughs> like what I've said here. So for example, you could cast on 12 plus 22 or you could, you know, just focus on what we've got here, which is 126 stitches. One thing I did want to mention um, if you haven't done patterns like this before, you'll notice uh, the last class I did, I did mention this, so if you were there, sorry I'm to repeat myself, but you'll notice we started with garter stitch with 96 stitches in the pattern, and we increased, there's always an increased row to get us up to 126 stitches. So the reason for that is that garter stitch is pretty wide, so this, uh, knit section that's on the edge here has a two stitches in this is wider than two stitches in the pattern. Um, so that's why it has increases in there. So if you need a KFB that means knit front and back, definitely check out on YouTube. We've got some increased videos so you can see what that looks like. If you just, if you skip this portion and you just want to cast straight on this 126 stitches and work in garter stitch, or you do your multiple of four plus 22, what will happen is the bottom of your blanket will be a bit wider. Um, sometimes it's super noticeable, sometimes it's not. Uh, occasionally you can get away with it. In Burnett blanket, because this has a, such a wide garter stitch border, it'll just make your life easier if you follow this stitch count. Um, but just know that if you don't do this increased row, it may not be perfectly rectangular. So that's the reason for that. And at the end, you'll see that there's a decrease row um, with knit two together. And again, that's to bring the stitches back because garter stitch is wide. You need fewer stitches to get the same 50 inch width across. Um, I apologize for wherever I lost something in one of the rows, but if you follow the first time I walked through the first four rows, it should be fine. And if you're re-watching on YouTube, um, you can check that out. Conscious of the time, I wanted to talk about the knit quilted blanket, um, which is a different technique. It is a bit more complicated, so I more so wanted to talk everyone through it so that if you were looking at this in the future, you could do this yourself. Um, so for this particular pattern, um, we've got here, it's 119 stitches that after the garter stitch increases have happened. Um, it took me a while to calculate this for some reason, but it's a multiple of 18 stitches plus 11, just because there's always someone who wants to know about the multiples. But if you're making your life easier, I would just cast on the amount that it tells you. But for a swatch that I was starting for today's class here, uh, I've got here 
uh, how many stitches have I got here? Let's double check to make sure. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 29, perfect. Uh, so 29, which is a multiple of 18 plus 11, because I just wanted to sort of jump right in to the pattern. So I'm just gonna write down here so we've got it. Swatch is 29. Um, what this pattern uses is again slip stitches, except they're happening purl wise. So I will demonstrate what that looks like. Um, but when you're working purl wise, you're inserting your needle as if you're gonna purl and slipping. When you create, I'm gonna pull up a picture of it here. Slipping your stitches with the yarn in front of your work is what creates that sort of uh, lift here. It's got a cool quilted look. I think I've seen this stitch in Barbara Walker's Treasury of Knitting Patterns, Knitting Stitches, in case you are thinking you may have seen this before. Um, I have worked here. I'm going to see if I can go back a row. Actually, I'm just going to start so I can demo with everyone. It will make my swatch look a little funny, but we'll go for it anyway. And I'm going to start with my first alternate row of knitting four, purling to the last four stitches, and knitting four again. So again, I'm working a swatch that has 29 stitches, just so I can demonstrate what this technique looks like. And if you've used this technique before, love to know how you've used it. I will say that it doesn't have a lot of stretch, so I wouldn't use it on maybe a hat unless you've really practiced with it and you know how, how the stitch is gonna behave in your yarn. So definitely recommend swatching. But yes, for today's swatch that I'm just to show the technique, I have cast on 29. And I'm just working the first row here again. So we can start from the sort of beginning. Almost at the end here. This particular project, you can see it was worked up in a self striping version of blanket, which means you don't have to change your color or wind in extra ends or anything. Um, so that looks super cool, especially with the lifted or the slip stitch effect. But you could also do it in a solid and it'll still look great. So I'm at the end of my first row, which was knit four, purl to the last four, and then knit four, because this pattern has a um, garter stitch border with four stitches on either end. So for the second row, the instructions say to knit six, slip five, purl wise with the yarn in front, knit one, repeat that until the last five. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit the first six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're going to slip the next five stitches. Make sure your yarn is not tangled. You want to be able to do this easily. So you're going to bring your yarn to the front of your work. Typically, when you're slipping, you might keep your yarn at the back but we're gonna bring it to the front because that's what creates that, this loop here. And we're gonna slip the next five stitches purl wise. So we're inserting from back to front like that. So one, two, three, four, and five. So we've slipped five stitches purl wise and our yarn is hanging out in the front. Now we're going to knit the next stitch. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to move our yarn again to the back in order to knit. With this type of technique, you don't wanna pull really tightly because that'll, you know, um, it'll sort of bunch up your work, which may be a desired effect, but for a blanket, you're gonna want it to lay flat. So you just don't pull too tightly. I always recommend keeping your stitches evenly on your needle and gently laying it across your five stitches keeping your yarn, it's back in the, it's in the back again. We're going to knit one 
And now we're going to slip the next five again purl wise. We're bringing our yarn to the front and slipping purl wise one, two, three, four, five. We're going to knit the next stitch. So we're bringing this, our working yarn to the back and leaving that loop there. Knit one, bring the yarn to the front. Purl wise, we're slipping one, two, three, four, and five. Bring the yarn to the back again and make sure that stitches, you don't want it too loose either because that'll create all sorts of mess on the front of your project after. So just gently. And we're going to knit one. And we've got five stitches left, and the pattern says to knit five. So one, two, three, four, and five. So you can see here I've got these loose ends, but we're going to tuck those in on our fourth row. So for now, the third row is to knit four, purl to the last four, and I'm just going to try to speed up a bit so I can show you the technique um, that's used in the fourth row and the rest of the pattern. All the alternate rows in this pattern for the body portion are knit four, purl to the last four, and then knit four. So essentially, reverse stocking stitch with a garter stitch border. One of the great things about Blanket, as you can see, is that it works up really fast. So you should be able to show the technique that's on the fourth row. So almost at the last four there. And we're going to knit these last four stitches. And now I'll demonstrate the fourth row of the project. And once you know the technique that's on the fourth row, you'll be able to do the rest of the pattern as well. So I'm going to knit the first eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now here it says we're going to insert our needle under the loose strand. So that's the one that's hanging out from the second row. So we're going to insert it under that and knit this next stitch here on your left hand needle. And when you pull your yarn through, instead of just pulling it through the stitch that's on your needle, you're also going to pull it through that underneath that loop. So what, I'm gonna just take my needle out so I can show you that again. So you're inserting your needle, your right hand needle, under that loop into the next stitch on your left hand needle. You're going to knit that next stitch, but when you're pulling through, you're also gonna pull it underneath that loop that's there. And then you're gonna slide it off. And what that's essentially done is you've caught that loop within this stitch here so that it's not um, just a long strand across your project but instead is what's forming that diamond quilted effect. So I'm going to just show you that. Um, I'm going to knit five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. And now we're going to take this loop here. We're going to insert our needle underneath the loop and into the next stitch, which we're going to knit. Wrap our yarn around the needle, draw, pull it through like we're going to knit, but we're also going to make sure that it's underneath that loop and slide off. It'll feel a bit weird at first, but after you've done it a few times, it'll make a bit more sense. And it'll also, after you've worked a few rows of it, you'll start to see the quilting 
effect or lattice work show up. So conscious of the time, I'm gonna keep demoing that, but if there are any questions, I can try to take them in if there are any, Bianca. So I've knit five, and again, I'm going to insert my needle under that loose strand into that next stitch. We're going to knit that next stitch, and again, we're pulling it underneath that loop and sliding it off, which is what has created that little tuck again. I'm going to knit five, and then we're going to knit the last three stitches on this row. So the slipping technique and then that knitting by inserting your needle under the loose strand is what will give you that effect that's used throughout the blanket. You can see I've used it a little here. So that's all there is to that, those particular types of slip stitches. Anything you wanted to go through, Bianca? Sorry, I've been on mute, it turns out, this whole time. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, sorry, I was just wondering, um, so I just had a question in the chat, uh, if we'd be able to use a cable needle uh, to do the slip stitches. Is that something you're familiar with? Or would you recommend just kind of sticking with the, the, the needles that you're working with? I would stick with the needles we're working with. The reason being is you're not really... With a cable needle, you're really doing it so you can bring some stitches forward or backward and knitting something that's over here. Well, it won't, I don't really see how the cable needle will work, but it, obviously if you try it out and it works and your stitches look the same, then go for it. But I don't think you need to worry about using a cable needle. Awesome. And uh, we're also wondering, does that stitch using the big loop to knit have a name? Uh, oh, I did. I'm going to just check my notes here. Oh, no, I've just written down quilted lattice stitch. Um, so if you are looking it up, I know when I googled like quilted lattice stitch and check some of my old stitch dictionaries, um, like the Barbara Walker ones, they've got it in there. Um, you can also look up like slip, cool like slip stitch techniques. People use this, obviously you can see that there's quite a bit of possibility with it based on the number of stitches you slip. Um, so definitely poke around. I think if you Google lattice stitch or quilted lattice stitch, um, put the word knit in there, of course, otherwise you'll end up down a different path. Crochet path. <laughs> Which I also love, so it's all good. <laughs> I did see, I know that um, got about a minute left. Uh, I'm going to knit this last, the sixth stitch because I did see somebody ask if it's possible, but I'm only gonna get to the last bit of it. Um, two, five, gone too far here. Knitting. For the sixth row, I'm just going to demonstrate the slip three with yarn in front. It's the same thing as the slip five with yarn in front. Uh, so we've knit one, two, three, four, five. And for the slip three with yarn in front, it's the same thing. We're bringing our yarn to the front, slipping one, two, three bringing our yarn to the back and then knitting. So it's the same as the five, it's just a shorter, shorter number. So yeah, if we wanna switch to face, that's all I've uh, got for today's stitches. It's been really fun trying to show everyone. We really just wanna show everyone the possibilities that you can do with knitting and purling and the addition of slip stitches and yarn overs can really up your knitting game. And if it all looked I know that sometimes it can look like a lot within an hour. Definitely go back and check, check out the re-air because then you can slow it down to your pace. That's all I've got for today. Thanks everyone. Join us next time. Bianca?
Thanks, Ema. Perfect. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.